that's the problem with the Republican Party, is that they are suffused with lies. I don't know why this network is paying Scott to, com if, to if, say if, those lies. Whoa, whoa, okay. Let's not go there, George, please. Let's not go there. Scott is our yeah. colleague, and we're going to treat him respectfully as such. This is a perfect encapsulation of the state of American journalism. The American people don't like it. They can't stand it. The formula is old, it's stale, and it's collapsing. But don't underestimate its capacity to misinform and do damage. Each person has an obligation to understand what is happening around them, in the community, in the state, in their county, in the country. And that includes being able to watch a news program and figure out who is bullshitting you and who is not. It is June the 3rd, 155 days remain. Out there on the horizon, there is a fight going on. It is a battle between the truth and the lie. And it is very important to understand that a democracy cannot survive when the citizen cannot distinguish between the two. This weekend, Donald Trump appeared on Fox and Friends. It was an absurd spectacle. Over and over and over again, Donald Trump talked about they. They, they, they and them, the thems and the theys, all conspiring together since who knows when to bring him down. What he said over and over again in the interview is that anybody who opposes him is sick. They're evil. He talked about retribution elliptically. He denied the revenge he's called for openly. And all the while, three slack-jawed imbeciles stared at him starry-eyed. It's incredible to watch. You famously said regarding Hillary Clinton, lock her up. You declined to do that as president. I beat her. It's easier when you win. And they all said lock her up. And I felt, and I could have done it, but I felt it would have been a terrible thing. And then this happened to me. And so I may feel differently about it. I can't tell you. I can, I'm not sure I can answer the question. When it was all over, the real world alumni sitting in the middle says, wow, isn't he honest? Let's watch the incredibleness directly. When I'm rewatching it from having been there yesterday, you know, he, he's just so honest. And I think that's, that is his strength. He's just kind of telling you what he thinks. He speaks from the heart. There's never a question that hones in specifically on anything. It's all blather, it's all nonsense, and it's incredibly dangerous. It's like they took me to trial, there's no crime. They were trying to devise a crime during the trial, that's how bad it was. In the end, across America, many people were convicted of felonies last week. Some pled guilty to felonies, some were acquitted. It's the way the process works. And yet, another pillar of American life is under assault. Let's take a look at CNN, where there was an extraordinary confrontation between George Conway and MAGA CNN pundit Scott Jennings. At first, host Casey Hunt stoked the confrontation. But then, when George Conway raised the central question, why is a global news organization paying somebody to muddle the truth and confuse their audience in the name of balance, Casey Hunt intervened. And she said this. Let's not go there, George, please. Let's not go there. No, no, okay. we should go there. Scott, is, Scott is our I, colleague, yeah. and we're going to treat him respectfully as such. Continue. What's important to understand about that clip is that everything else that I'm about to show you at a fundamental level doesn't really matter. All that does is that outcome, that declaration. Think about it like a boundary, a circle maybe. There are people that are inside the circle, and there are people that are outside the circle. In the center of the circle, the ringmaster literally is Casey Hunt, who is addressing a camera and through the lens an audience. This is so important to understand. There is a hierarchy. The people inside the circle are colleagues, and the people outside the circle are the audience. And a colleague must never be confronted when they're purposefully and deliberately lying or not to the audience because colleagues outrank the American public, the American citizen, the global citizen, and the truth. What is it that Scott Jennings 
is paid to do. Let's watch what drove George Conway completely crazy. He's talking about these Gee, obvious so crimes that were committed. That, 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 I mean, he's talking about the obvious crimes that were supposedly committed, but that's the core of what a lot of decidedly non-MAGA Republicans are mad about is that there is no underlying crime. I looked at the statement from Maine Senator Susan Collins, who I think encapsulated it perfectly. She said this was a partisan prosecutor who promised to get Trump, nonsense. and that's what he did, not promised to Absolute go after the law, nonsense. but he promised, he promised to go after Donald Trump. And so the issue is here, what is the crime? The first thing you'll notice is Scott Jennings denies that Donald Trump was even convicted. Whether you think the case should have been bought or not, the fact remains the case was brought. He was indicted by a grand jury in Manhattan and a jury of 12 individuals under oath convicted him. He now has an appellate process to go through. But the event happened. Scott Jennings is an interpreter of sorts. He's not rancid and wretched in the same manner that Corey Lewandowski was or any of the other paid liars from CNN during the Zucker era. Scott Jennings is a veteran of the Bush White House and of Mitch McConnell's Senate Majority Leader Office. But what Scott Jennings has become over nine years' time is a spokesperson for the MAGA extremist cause. He seeks to reconcile the connection point to a fascist extremist movement and the old Republican Party that it has completely consumed and subsumed. What Scott Jennings' main job is, is to interpret what Donald Trump and his top MAGA lieutenants say by telling the audience they don't mean the words that they clearly just spoke that have specific meaning. Scott Jennings' job is to say that red is blue and blue is yellow and yellow is green. Scott Jennings' job is to say up is down and down is up, that anything and nothing can be everything. Scott Jennings' job is to confuse the truth and the plain meaning of plain statements in the name of balance. His job is to argue that it's the rhetoric that's different, not the meaning, not the intent, that it's just a little bit hotter and a little bit more heated, but things are just the way they always have been. When the Republicans and Democrats get together in the room, everybody is friends after five o'clock. Everybody is friends in the green room. But is that what is happening in America at this hour? The news which George Conway spoke to, the guilty verdict, wasn't the headline by the time this group convened. Let's listen to what George Conway said. What do you got to say to Scott? I, I have to say, I mean, look, I mean, you know, Scott's lying, and that's the problem with the Republican Party. It is continually addicted to lies. What am I, wait a minute, what, am I, what, am, I, what, what am I lying You're about? You're lying. Not, You're I'm lying. Not, not You're thing, lying, Scott. Lie. You're lying about the law. You're lying about what the jury was charged to find. They don't have to find an underlying crime. They had to find the intent to cover up an underlying crime. And the underlying crime was pretty obvious. What was the you, crime? You ran for public office, Scott. You, you ran for public office, Scott. You know you can't take money from somebody and reimburse them to, for as a, you know, if it's a campaign. I've, ne I've never run, you I've know never that run for damn public well. office. And you're, okay, fine. Well, you, you're close enough, you're involved in politics <laughs> to know that, okay? So that's the problem with the Republican Party is that they are suffused with lies. I don't know why this network is paying Scott to, to if, say if, those if, lies. Whoa, whoa, well, well, okay, well, let's, show. let's not know there, George, please. C please couple, let's not go oh, there. No, no, okay. we should go things, there. Scott, is, Scott is our I, colleague, yeah. and we're going to treat him respectfully as such. Continue. Well, you should hear here, the progression of this conversation. George Conway's accurate and precise legal description. Scott Jennings' errancy, based on the fact in part that he is not a lawyer and has no idea what he's talking about. George Conway's harsh and theatrical rebuke, Casey Hunt's intervention, all the way up to the dramatic moment, speaks perfectly to the crisis in American media. Why the American people can't figure out what's happening. Is the danger real or is it pretend? Is it a reality show? Is it make-believe? Scott Jennings is there to tell you everything is as it ever was. Is that true? It's not. This is an urgent moment. Something terrible happened. And it wasn't Trump's conviction. That was an ordinary thing in an extraordinary situation. Donald Trump, in the end, is citizen Trump. 
not President Trump, that we bestow out of courtesy and respect the honorific for a lifetime. The power is fleeting. Many citizens were convicted of felonies last week. Many pled guilty to felonies. Many prisoners were discharged from penitentiaries who had served time for felonies. Nothing unusual happened. Some of last week's convictions across the country will be overturned on appeal. Maybe Donald Trump's will be one of them. What happened last week was completely and utterly ordinary, except for that it happened to a former president of the United States, which makes it an exceptional individual situation, not an exceptional circumstance in its details, in its specifics. What was extraordinary was the explosion of threats to violence, to chaos, to murder, to mayhem that spewed like poison across the internet, across TikTok, across Twitter, from senators, from congressmen, from party officials. The threats piled up. Dozens turned into hundreds, into thousands, into tens of thousands of calls for mayhem and the destruction of America's civilization and our institutions. Because Donald Trump alleges, without any fact, without any evidence, a conspiracy of they's and them's. Plotting to get him since when, Marco Rubio? When did the conspiracy begin? How long has this prospective jury pool been in on it? When were they first selected? 10 years ago? 20 years ago? Were they selected in grade school to bring Donald Trump down when he inevitably finished The Apprentice and became president? lost the election, started the insurrection, and then came back, it is all madness, insanity. And what we know for certain is that it is indulged, not at a journalism level, but at a management level at CNN. And that's very unfortunate because there should be consequences for untruthfulness, for obfuscations, dissembling. The constancy of it has eroded the ability of most people to have an appreciation for what is happening. Everything isn't down the middle. It's not split evenly. Both sides are not calling for violence. One is not calling for the overthrow of the election process, the jury system, the judicial system. One does not have two Supreme Court justices with seditionist and insurrectionist flags flying over their homes associated with it. This is a perfect encapsulation of the state of American journalism. The American people don't like it. They can't stand it. The formula is old, it's stale, and it's collapsing. But don't underestimate its capacity to misinform and do damage. Each person has an obligation to understand what is happening around them, in the community, in the state, in their county, in the country. And that includes being able to watch a news program and figure out who is bullshitting you and who is not, where the news starts and where it ends, where the show business starts and where that ends. A lot of these panels are kabuki. This moment doesn't require more kabuki. It requires deep understanding about complex issues. A nation of 330 million people being run by Lauren Boebert's and Matt Gates's and Marjorie Taylor Greene's is headed to catastrophe. The news media is supposed to be in the business of clearly presenting that danger. In the case of Fox, they stoke it and instigate it. But in the case of CNN, so long as it doesn't touch on a colleague's ability to lie and confuse, everything is A-OK. -okay. It's not. And that is today's warning. I'm Steve Schmidt. This is The Warning. And I invite you to join, subscribe, on our Substack, on our YouTube channel. Follow us. Welcome to the community.